So uh, now we'll start with uh, one of the uh, uh, DevOps tool, which is which we call it as Ansible. This is also mm -hmm. one of the open source tool. So let me uh, share you with a small presentation. Uh, let me know once my screen is visible. Sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, is it visible? Okay, great. So welcome to Zenstech, guys. Uh, I'm Tiffany Yadav, a uh, Zenstech employee. So today we're gonna begin with the Scratch uh, DevOps tool. We call it as Ansible. So this uh, Ansible is basically a, a, a DevOps tool which helps you to uh, build a configuration into your machines. Let's say uh, this this helps uh, DevOps teams to uh, to deploy those machines which uh, which which needs a prerequisite a prerequisite setup and configuration to be uh, uh, well embedded into those machine of your uh, clouds. So in in the coming session we're gonna uh, go into deep down as well how we're gonna deploy those. So let's let's begin with uh, some some uh, some queries from your end. So how well well aware you are about this Ansible tool and what uh, have you heard about the DevOps culture? So guys, uh, yes, a sweet. Can you elaborate? But yeah. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, uh, Yashashri, are you facing any issue with your mic? Um, uh, no. Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I just want to a uh, brief, uh, small uh, uh, overview about uh, what you have uh, experienced in this uh, DevOps tool or any uh, of your uh, DevOps culture. What no, DevOps I don't have any uh, experience with DevOps or uh, these the tools like uh, an Ansible. It's like a new, uh, completely new skill which I'm learning now. <laughs> okay, no worries. So this is a very simple tool. We call it as Ansible. And this, uh, let's say you want to uh, uh, set up some machine with having some some pre uh, pre installed packages installed to it, so that uh, your all the uh, all the uh, uh, we can say the uh, development part and all the libraries should be pre installed to it. So whenever you build up any any kind of project. And those projects require uh, to have some some libraries and dependencies uh, required to be pre-installed into your machine. So uh, this Ansible helps you to uh, install those packages whenever your machine gets started into your cloud, like any of your cloud, like AWS, Azure. You might have heard about the uh, or different different cloud uh, providers. Yes. Okay. So may I know which uh, uh, cloud you are a bit familiar with right now? Uh, AWS. Okay, so AWS is also one of the cloud providers. So similarly, there are some uh, other cloud providers like Google GCP cloud provider and Microsoft uh, cloud provider, like we call it as Azure. So in in in, in other terms, there are multiple clouds uh, dig like DigitalOcean. So they, what usually does they basically spin up the machine and they have uh, they have uh, virtual machines which are deployed into the clouds. And those machines are like you can say like a, a, a clear bare a bare machines. They do doesn't have any any kind of package installed in it. So this Ansible tool helps you to make some make some prerequisite things to be done into your after your machine got in uh, you can say up and running. So your all those uh, prerequisite parts should be automatically done by this Ansible tool. So uh, coming forward, we'll get to know into deep down as well. So what all things can be done with the help of Ansible as well. So, so there are very important. Uh, uh, One sec, please. Guys, uh, let me know if uh, my uh, updated PD is visible, guys. Yes, it is. Visible. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Okay. So basically, in the contents, we'll start off with the what uh, Ansible is. 
and uh, what all sort of things we can do with the ansible and later on the terms of the ansible and what is the architecture how this ansible architecture works and the very important thing is modules so what uh, uh, what are the ansible modules so there are diff different certain modules like you want you want to copy some files from from your one machine to uh, to you can say at a at the same time you want to copy that file to uh, hundreds of the different machine which is uh, located in the remote locations like in the form of uh, uh, cloud services like you you might have uh, different different machine which is uh, working on the uh, different different clouds like A AWS clouds or there are some machine which is uh, which are which are running on some uh, Amazon cloud so there might be some multiple machine which are running and you want to install or you can say you want to move one file from uh, from the ansible master machine so there for that case you need to use some modules like uh, for copying file from your ansible master so there is a copy module similarly for uh, installing any packages there are some uh, package manager modules so there are different different models so that th those helps us to fulfill our uh, our requirement to uh, uh, to uh, install those dependencies in those uh, remote machines so to give you a brief idea about like uh, how this uh, uh, ansible works like there is all, there is only one machine uh, which is uh, in which ansible master is installed and the rest of the uh, the rest of these remote machine are uh, only working with 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 the help of ssh uh, you can say command so there we don't need to install any kind of uh, ansible you can say into into your uh, uh, into your remote machine so you just need to install ansible only to one machine which will act as your master ansible machine and the rest of the machine will be communicated with the help of your ssh command and later on, uh, there is a YAML file uh, in the content. So, what are YAML files? That is, uh, this is basically to write some sort of uh, uh, scripts in the form of configurations. So, in the, in the coming session, we will gonna uh, get deep into it. Like uh, uh, we call it as uh, playbook in the Ansible to write our uh, write some sort of automation scripts. And uh, let's say we wanna deploy some some packages into uh, uh, let's say fifty of those machines. So you will not go into uh, each machine and you will not uh, individually go into the machine and uh, you will uh, start uh, taking the commands into those machines for installing the packages. So there should be an alternative way who can uh, help you or who can automate your things. So in this in, in this uh, in this uh, uh, advanced uh, future, you can say uh, the Ansible tools uh, gives you very much a bit uh, advantage of using these uh, tools like in the earlier times there were system admins who used to daily uh, start up uh, in the morning in the nine they used to uh, uh, go into each machine they used to configure all those dependencies and they used to uh, install all those packages so uh, from the nine to five they usually do these this similar sort of tasks so uh, in this way ansible came into the picture they, they they have provided some some configuration and they have provided some playbooks to it so with that, uh, they have automated all these similar tasks uh, in a very short span of time. So in in the couple of seconds, you can directly hit to uh, at the same time you can directly hit to hundreds of machine or two hundreds of machines. So in this way, you can automate your infrastructure deployment. Like uh, if you wanna install uh, your packages libraries and let's say you wanna take up some some uh, uh, Java project and you want to install some libraries of those uh, Javas. So that should be already pre-installed into your machine. So then and then only your projects will uh, work on that machine. So this is how uh, Ansible uh, came into the picture to make you fulfilled with all the requirements and all those dependencies uh, and support libraries. So yes, guys, uh, any queries still here? No. So, yeah, in the coming session, we'll uh, get more handier with it. We'll write some sort of Ansible playbooks. And with that, we will try to deploy it into the, uh, uh, into, into the remote machines. So there are some rules as well. So Ansible rules is nothing but uh, this is a purified uh, uh, structure, which, is, which, which provides us a, a, a very categorized form of uh, automation scripts. And that there are some, some hosts uh, uh, host are defined. There are some uh, tasks are defined. So in that, in that task, you basically specify what all uh, sort of things you need to perform into your remote machines. And similarly, there are some variables. Variables is nothing but uh, the the thing which you wanna uh, uh, assign to your, uh, like like uh, 
which machine uh, you want to assign so your machine information will be like uh, in the form of variables so you need to provide all those remote machines information into one uh, one host files so that host file is nothing but uh, this carries all the variables of those remote machines so in the in that file there might be your machine's ip address and your machine's pass password and your machine's username so the same thing which we are trying to do for ac accessing our uh, our cloud machine which is uh, we have tried to do it with the ssh and the username at the rate on uh, the uh, uh, ip address and later on we were uh, uh, fetch with the some certain sort of password to it so in similar way we need to provide some variables in the form of uh, uh, username and the ips of those machine and the uh, password uh, of those machines so then and then only the sensible will try to hit those remote machines. Yes, uh, Yashashri, are you getting these points? Yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm getting along. OK, great. So this is basically to start a basic overview. If you get into more handy, you will get uh, to more explore into it. So this is a very beautiful tool, you can say. This, this, this helps a lot uh, in today's uh, DevOps scenario. So this, this provides a very much uh, large scale uh, automation to your cloud infrastructure. So this is a very trending uh, tool in the today's market. So I will get you to more handier with it. So in the today's session, we'll get some more overview brief idea about the Ansible. So in the coming session, we'll get more handier to it. Yeah, this is Yes. Okay, great. So basically, as I said, uh, what is Ansible? Ansible is basically the uh, uh, open source tool for IT configuration management and the deployment tool. So as I said, I've already given you a brief idea about uh, where exactly we use this. So let's say you, you have some project to be deployed into your cloud. So in that case, your, your cloud should be capable of running those, uh, those uh, projects and those libraries and those dependencies should be already installed to it. So then and then only your uh, application will execute in, in those uh, machines. So that thing has been done by the Ansible. So we just need to write some certain sort of uh, uh, scripts to it. And based on those scripts, your uh, full uh, deployment and your full configuration will be already uh, set up into those remote machines in the form of, you can say, uh, uh, in the, in the, in the another term, you can say this is your cloud machine. So this is very uh, simple tool to use, and this is very powerful, and and this gives you a very automated, complex, uh, multiple uh, multi tier application environments. So in that, let's say you have uh, some uh, some three tier or uh, more than two tier uh, application of your projects. In that, you you are running uh, running some front end application as well as uh, some back end application, and you're attached with some some database application as well. So it should fulfill all the requirements of those uh, those uh, 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 those uh, projects uh, uh, which are required for it. So, moving further, why we uh, uh, do we need this Ansible? So this question is basically, I've already uh, uh, taken you to a bit simple example like. So uh, in the earlier time, system admin person or you can say system admin role were to uh, uh, come in the morning and do all sort of uh, installation and install all those dependencies of those projects. So this this got reduced by the uh, by the Ansible tool. So now uh, we just need to uh, get up to uh, get up to some agile methodology, and we just need to release our software in a very uh, short span of time. So with the, with this tool, we have reduced a very large time for uh, for uh, software deployment. So in this case, uh, sorry, uh, in this case, your all sort of uh, uh, prerequisite part have been done with this uh, Ansible tool itself. So moving further, there are some terminologies in the in the Ansible term. So we need to make sure that uh, we should be able to uh, get the uh, basic idea about this. So uh, there are some uh, system control machines. So this is the one machine where exactly the Ansible uh, package is uh, installed in the form of, you can say, this will be your uh, Ansible master machine. And in this, uh, in this only, in this machine only, your uh, your Ansible will be installed, and uh, none of the other machines should be uh, installed with the Ansible. Thereafter, uh, you just need to provide uh, uh, some inventories files. So in that inventory file, there are. Uh, the information stored in uh, of those remote machines like uh, uh, 
you, you want to interact with the rest of the 50 machines and you want to install uh, uh, some packages to it. So in that uh, very first thing is we need to uh, make sure that uh, the information of those machine or those server should be uh, provided into that inventory file. So there is one file we call it as a host file or you can say inventory file as well. So this inventory file stores your uh, information of your remote machines. So and later on the playbooks. Playbooks is, as you can say, the executable part of, uh, of the Ansible. So in this playbook, we usually write some sort of uh, uh, some sort of task, and uh, the playbooks uh, usually try to uh, execute those tasks into the remote machines. So this has basically been written in the YAML file, or you can say YAML uh, configuration file. So which is a very much uh, 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 simple language, and this is very much easy to uh, readable. You can say by the humans. So this is not a bit complicated programming language like a java or uh, any other programming language this is very much uh, easy and human readable language you can uh, let's say you want to install any packages to it you just need to uh, assign to some certain uh, task categories and thereafter uh, let's say you have a centos based machine so you need to uh, choose for uh, uh, centos package manager like uh, yum so yum is basically used for installing the package in the centos based machine so similarly on the task segment, so as I said, uh, uh, the, the execution of uh, or you can say the requirement you want to perform into your uh, uh, remote machine, those are being uh, done in the task section. So task section is, uh, or you can say, this is embedded in the uh, uh, playbook itself. So this, this comes under your playbook section. So you just, I will make you a bit aware of the syntax as well. So how these playbooks have been written. So this task will fall under the playbooks category. There is there is one category for the task where we exactly define what all sort of things to be uh, performed into your uh, remote machines. Yes, uh, uh, Yashasri, Smita? Yes. OK. So there is one more, uh, uh, there is a few more uh, terms here. So we call it as modules. So as I've already uh, taken your brief idea about the module, so these are, you can say, uh, one liner command or uh, or you can say uh, you, you can uh, deploy these modules with with single line commands of the ansible like uh, you want to uh, copy one file from your master machine to hundreds of the remote machines so you, you can write simple one liner command in the in, in, and you will call uh, the copy module in that and the copy module will help you to copy uh, your file from the uh, Ansible source machine to the destination machine. So there might be uh, multiple destination machine. So those machine information will be pulled out from this host file or you can say the inventory file. So inventory will store the information of your uh, remote machine. machines. Yeah. And the role is basically, as, as I have said, uh, the role is uh, like uh, this will give you a uh, uh, categorized form of uh, task which is need to be performed into your so this is a bit similar to your playbook but uh, the role represents you a very good and very uh, readable format to understand your uh, execution of that playbook so this is a part of playbook itself but uh, th the role is uh, provided into some some categorized way so that uh, this can be easily understand and it's, this can be easily uh, deployed to uh, uh, any other machines as well so moving further, we'll have uh, we have a small structure of uh, of Ansible. So uh, let's let's me give you a brief idea about from where we basically start up. Let's let's say a, a user or you can say a system admin person is uh, trying to install some packages into some remote uh, server. So this is your uh, uh, destination, and this is your initial point. So uh, starting with uh, the user, this is your uh, a system admin person he will write uh, some sort of playbooks and in that playbook your your execution will be written in that like uh, you want to fulfill some installation into your remote machine in the form of uh, uh, so let's say you want to take up some python and some java should be installed in it and uh, some some pip, uh, pip library should be installed to it so these are some requirements and those requirements should be done and those requirements should be fulfilled with uh, these such uh, web server and web uh, you can say these servers like these are my remote machine let's consider there are multiple remote machines so there you can see there are multiple racks have been stored 
so this is my cloud machine so every rack ha is having a, a more than a multiple machine to it so in similar way this is our final uh, outcome so here we want to deploy our packages into these uh, remote machines so what uh, in between comes is uh, the first thing is inventory so this is the very first thing uh, prerequisite thing you need to be uh, aware of like uh, in the inventory you need to provide the information of your uh, remote machine like uh, which user and which ip is assigned to this machine so all those information should be provided into this inventory files and the apis will help you to uh, communicate between your uh, between your uh, ansible master machine to your remote machine and as i said there are some modules have been used so these are the models for which is nothing but to let's say you want to start some services into your remote machine so with the help of uh, these modules so you can uh, uh, start up some services to it like uh, all sort of instruction is already written in the playbooks so every instruction like uh, uh, like to perform a task in this so this will be given to this uh, uh, this uh, automation engine so in that in that uh, first it will check for uh, which machine he want to perform this task like as of now uh, in in the inventory like uh, in in the inventory i have uh, stored some some information of uh, let's say uh, we have 10 machines information in the inventories and i want to install uh, some some packages like in the form of uh, uh, docker and and uh, and nginx server so i want to install these such packages into my remote machine and i have written all those uh, instruction in this playbook so what this playbook does it will uh, throw to the uh, ansible master machine and ansible master will uh, uh, fulfill those requirement with the, with using these modules let's say to install any package there is a module for installing the package and for uh, for checking which machine to be uh, uh, to be get consider uh, consider to these uh, installation so those information are provided by the inventories so in the inventories I, I, the machine i've brought in the inventories all those machine will get affected with those so let's say i've provided the 10 machine information so all the 10 machine will, uh, machine will get affected with this playbook uh, uh, task performance and later on there are some plugins and based on these plugins we can uh, uh, we can uh, add up some more modification to it so this is a you can say uh, this is a workflow of ansible In person they will write some sort of uh, ansible playbooks yeah. and though based on those playbooks their execution have been done in those uh, inventory files with the help of using some modules and uh, add on add on with some plugins so there might be some network so in my case i'm using uh, the, the vpn to access my cloud so that's why uh, uh, th they have shown us to access those machine of your uh, remote machine you should be able to get into some cloud as well so this is this is some advanced uh, you can say some uh, additional layer with uh, attached to this ansible uh, uh, dashboard so let me erase this i guess this is very much uh, dirty yeah okay so guys uh, are, are you understanding the flow we are starting with here so the uh, ansible um, master re resides in the automation engine which receives the uh, playbook uh, that is the instructions of the of uh, in yaml and it uh, uh, takes the information from the inventory of on the remote machines so that mm -hmm. the master can assign the task to the uh, in uh, to the remote machines for uh, application installation yeah exactly so all this part you can say from here mm -hmm. to uh, to here mm -hmm. here yeah this thing these things have been done in your master machine Okay. And the above layer are your, uh, uh, you can say, advanced layer, like uh, like your machine, or you can say your remote machine is uh, working on some uh, VPN network. So you need to attach some network to it. So as of now, as of my uh, our case, we have uh, a cloud in the VPN network. So we mm -hmm. need to go into uh, go into this network, and we need to uh, uh, connect to our VPN first. So that's why we need, they have added some some more layers to it. So this is you can say this is optional layer. So if you are directly trying to uh, access your public uh, cloud like uh, AWS, AWS machine in the form of EC2 machines. So uh, those are like, uh, you can say those are like a uh, public cloud. You don't need to uh, uh, set up some VPN to it. You can directly uh, SSH into those machine without uh, having any uh, private network. Okay. So this is, this is the optional network. 
so these things are like uh, the, the thing which i have already circled in this these are like your uh, your ansible master machine and this is your uh, remote machine so there might be uh, multiple remote machine which is running on the different different clouds or there might be on the same cloud like i am considering here as a i'm working on the 100 uh, of the machines so i should be able to fulfill those uh, those machine with uh, with these dependencies and these uh, uh, compatibility and uh, these requirements which is written into this playbook so which is the playbook is nothing but the, the script which is written in the yaml file so this is basically to give you idea about uh, how this workflow but uh, in the coming session we'll uh, we'll definitely go into uh, deep as well so we'll make our hand dirty to uh, writing some sort of uh, ansible playbook to it so yes uh, yes yes we uh, are you clear with this basic uh, overflow of this uh, yes so okay. can we access ansible through the linux command line then yeah yeah it's okay. ansible is nothing but uh, this is a one of the packages similar to like a uh, docker as well oh so we'll have to install this on our uh, yeah, yeah exactly okay okay we just need to install ansible in the only one machine okay. and that machine will be considered as your master okay that machine you can you can easily uh, uh, communicate with the rest of the remote machine so there might be uh, uh, there might be any count like you want to interact with uh, thousands of machine you just need to give the information of those thousands machine into this inventory file and rest you can say uh, you can fulfill all those uh, requirement into those machine so you just need to provide the uh, uh, information of those uh, thousand machine into your uh, ansible master inventory files Yep, guys. Yeah. So, um, like uh, you said, it is trending in the DevOps market. So, uh, how does it have an upper hand compared to the other uh, applications in the market? So, as I said, uh, what the, makes the, it uh, trending? Yeah, basically, the part of the automation you can see, uh, you can directly uh, fulfilling all those tasks which you, uh, which you, which you earlier days you you usually go into each machine. So you might uh, take the time complexity. How this uh, this uh, this was taking a bit time of uh, accessing those machine individually, and here with the help of Ansible, you can uh, access those machine uh, parallelly at the same time. You can, you are playing with the with the thousands of machines. and you are not going into each of this machine individually your ansible manager or you can say ansible master machine only uh, will try to hit those uh, remote machine you don't need to go into your uh, each of those remote machines mm -hmm. so every time i am uh, taking this terminology as a remote machine this is nothing but your cloud machine yeah 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 okay so yes ssv i am getting these simple yes, concepts yes, yes. okay okay great so let's move further and we'll uh, get up to some modules as well so uh, i've also uh, already uh, uh, discussed to you about the modules basically this helps you to execute your playbooks so basically in this in this playbooks uh, the first thing required is to have uh, some certain inventory so it will try to get get to know that uh, to which machine it should get interacted so and later on Uh, uh, to perform the task, it will go to the go to the module section, and, and it will tell the module to I want to perform these such tasks into these uh, remote machine. So uh, help me out with these uh, uh, this performance or uh, these uh, tasks as well. So modules will help that uh, that playbook to execute those tasks into uh, the into uh, to those uh, remote machines. So this will like uh, this is already embedded with the Ansible master, uh, manager machine itself. so the, as a module you can say i have already given uh, some some example like uh, uh, for let's say you want to start uh, multiple services in the form of like multiple servers uh, into remote machine without accessing those machine uh, individually going into it so you can uh, uh, use some modules related related to uh, to the services that will uh, that will uh, help you to start and stop those services using these modules so i am talking about the services like uh, uh you might have uh, uh, some jenkins server and some docker server and uh, some some tomcat server some apache server there might be some some nginx server so you might have came across with deploying any any web application so you need uh, you need to have some server to uh, uh, perform into your front end application so so for running those services 
so you should be able to uh, uh, perform those services into those remote machines so uh, those all things have been uh, embedded with this module so uh, you can say module uh, has a has a tool of uh, you can say a bunch of a tool which uh, which exactly perform all those tasks so the, the main role of uh, performing the task has been done with the help of uh, modules as, uh, itself and yeah so as i said uh, these are some list of uh, 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 some modules like uh, let's say you want to ping uh, all those remote machines so you will directly use this uh, ping module so what this ping module does can anybody explain is it used to packet information, information grapper right packet uh, information grapper the same thing that we did learnt in linux network commands no it's uh, it's like um, to to uh, uh, check IPM. those machine yeah to check those machine it is uh, running or not or you can say to uh, to check that machine has been uh, uh, to to establish the communication between those machines so this ping command is used like uh, let's say uh, you have one machine which is running on the remote uh, uh, server and uh, and you want to you want to check that uh, that machine is still alive or not and for that case you can use this ping module so let me take you to some example uh, of this so So let's have a uh, simple example like uh, this is our Google page, and uh, can you see my screen first of all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So ev everything has its uh, its uh, certain uh, IP address attached to it. So every uh, every you can say every DNS has its IP attached to it. So what I will do is I will trace through this uh, Google.com. And I will get some IP which is uh, running behind that uh, google.com. Google so if I ping this, uh, uh, ping this IP, so you can say uh, this will uh, uh, make uh, this will give me some uh, reward connection from it. You can say um, I'm sending some packages and I'm, meanwhile I'm receiving those packages. So in this way, I'm just uh, testing my connection with uh, my PC and the Google connection. So in this way, we usually uh, test our connection. If if we <coughs> lost our in network or if we have lost our uh, uh, internet connectivity, so in this way, we usually try to uh, uh, check our network with uh, with the help of uh, uh, ping module. So this helps to uh, uh, make our can say this helps to uh, uh, check our connectivity with our uh, remote machines. Yes, guys. Uh, yeah. Are you there with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as I've already discussed with the copy module as well, so let's say you want to copy uh, some file or some, some directory from your uh, Ansible master machine to, to thousands of uh, the thousands of your uh, Ansible remote machines. So uh, with the help of this copy module, you can uh, do, do those or you can, you can uh, uh, fulfill, those, fulfill those requirements. Similarly, there are some services like a service uh, module so service model is basically helps you to uh, start and stop your server, which is running into your uh, uh, remote machines. So as I said, uh, there might be some Apache server running or uh, this has been stopped by any such reason. You want to start those Apache server. So you can do that uh, with the help of using this Apache, or, sorry, with the help of uh, service, we call it as a, a service module. So there are some file related modules. So there are some inliner, there are some archive and in archive. So let's say you want to archive some, uh, some, or you can say to, you want to make some compression of your, uh, of your files into your remote machine. Let's say you're, uh, you want to make some, uh, some compressed file of your, uh, your machine. And because it's getting too much, or you can say it, it is utilizing too much, uh, resources, mm -hmm. or you can say too much storage of your uh, machine. Mm -hmm. And being in your master machine, you can directly control your uh, remote machine, and you can uh, uh, you can make some uh, 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 compression of your files which is being stored into your remote machine. So this is how your the beauty of this tools helps you to automate your infrastructure. Um, sorry, oh, Bipin, what is the what is the command that is? Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry, your voice is breaking in between. The command below file. 
line and file okay line this is file. line oh, and file okay okay thank you so this is also one of the models basically uh, if you want to uh, perform any task so let me yeah so let's say uh, you want to perform any task inside the file let's say you want to make some some changes inside of your file so with the help of line in file we uh, use these uh, to to perform the line in uh, file modification or anything related to uh, make some modification inside the line okay or you can say inside the file or you can say any any kind of changes you want to make in those uh, remote machines mm -hmm. yeah so um, we are just talking about the 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 one machine which is uh, installed with the ansible master so yeah so uh, in the yaml files uh, uh, no worries uh, uh, you and uh, tejaswini you, you might uh, get to know a bit more uh, with the yaml file as well so I've, i'm expecting smita have already came across with the yaml file so yeah. this is yeah so this is also one of the uh, uh, the uh, configuration management or you can say configuration writing uh, uh, syntax where we usually write our configuration those have been uh, uh, used with uh, with some defining some keys and value stats so you might have came across with uh, dictionaries yes uh, 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 yes yes uh, yeah dictionaries uh, are like uh, while basics of python i know so in that i just came across dictionaries and stuff yeah yeah exactly so same concept is been used in these files as well so you they, these files usually are uh, add up add on with uh, some dictionary concepts and there are some some data type concepts like uh, list or uh, some some list are mostly used in this uh, this playbooks like to to install some multiple packs Packages. you can uh, provide those uh, multiple packages to one single uh, list and it will uh, try to install those packages one by one into your remote machines so it's it's very much simple i will uh, uh, explain you in the, into the uh, coming session so i just wanted to uh, brief you about this uh, yaml file so this is a, a file which we uh, uh, which we write in the form of playbooks so there you can see uh, for writing the playbooks those have been written in the yaml file so you should be uh, you should be familiar with the yaml file how to write the yaml syntax so to write the playbooks you should be uh, well aware of the uh, uh, the syntax of the yaml so no worries this is very much simple you can uh, easily understand it with uh, with writing some simple uh, playbooks and we'll will will write some sort of playbooks uh, by uh, end of the sessions and uh, and later on we can bit more familiar with this okay Oh, there we go. So, uh, yeah. So it follows the indentation. So, which is the also the similar way the Python uses. So this is you can say if you know basic idea about the Python, you can easily understand the YAML file as well. So Python is a very big thing, and uh, YAML is a very small thing. You don't, you just don't need to uh, learn or hold the programming language. This is a bit of you can say human understandable language. You just need to provide some keys and some values. Like uh, you want to perform some task, you should you should be uh, provide uh, provide the name of the task and the uh, the uh, the uh, description of the task. Like what all sort of things will be performed with this uh, task. So this is uh, that much uh, easier, you can say. So you don't need to uh, learn any kind of uh, programming language to understand the YAML files. Yes, guys, are there with yes. me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Great. So let me show you a simple uh, YAML file syntax. So there you can see, uh, uh, this is my first playbook. So as I said, YAML file is used for uh, deploying, or you can say to write any any kind of playbooks in the Ansible. So uh, uh, for uh, for uh, usually Ansible understand the uh, the 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 executable in the form of playbook. So we call it as Ansible playbook. But those playbooks are written in the YAML files. So, so this is how they are represented. So we need to start with the the. Uh, uh, is it clear to all guys? First of all. Yeah. Yes, it is. So uh, to start with uh, uh, defining the playbook, you should uh, first of all uh, you should start with the hyphen sign. There you can see there is one uh, minus sign. You can see this is a hyphen sign. So this represents like uh, you you are trying to start with the Ansible playbooks from here. 
So just after the hyphen sign, you can start your uh, writing all those uh, playbooks informations. So the, the, there is a first command like uh, this is your playbook name. So what name you want to provide to this playbook? So these these have been provided here. And the host is nothing but this is your uh, information of your inventories. Like uh, in my case, let me take you to the architecture again and we'll get some more idea from it. So we have written all those playbooks. So let's consider this is our whole playbook and how this playbook works, I'm trying to show you here. So in the host section, you might have seen there, there was a host and there, after that host, we have provided all. So that all was nothing but uh, the, the information of those inventory uh, inventory machines, or you can say the remote machine, which was provided in this inventory file. So those were the information of the host. Yeah, and uh, it will try to perform uh, the rest of the task into these all hosts. So the thing which you have provided into our host machine, so it will perform this task into rest of this host machine. So let me ping this. Okay, so here if you have provided any any uh, certain specific IPs in the in the host after the host uh, uh, section, you can say uh, it is following some uh, uh, key and value pair section. There you can see we have provided some some host information and later on we have given uh, uh, provided some variables like all. So all is nothing but it will try to uh, communicate with the all the machine which is provided in that host file the one which you have provided to our master machine in the form of inventories. So please uh, get my point like uh, host file is nothing but your inventory file. So both are the same. So don't get confused between these. Yeah. So if okay. I'm if I'm not if I don't want all the remote machines to be listed, then I just put only IPs of certain machines then. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. So okay. let's say, let's say uh, you have some certain uh, certain in, in, in any corporation or in any company, there are multiple groups are working mm -hmm. like uh, like a developer groups or uh, like like a tester team are there, and there are certain uh, DevOps teams are there. So every team are working on some certain machines, okay. and uh, yeah. So let's say we are taking a simple uh, scenario here. Yeah. So in that, uh, let's say overall corporate machine, uh, uh, overall company has uh, hundred of hundreds of machines, and they have allocated uh, fifty of machines to the uh, to the developer, and twenty five of the machines to the tester teams, and the twenty five machines to the dev uh, DevOps teams. And uh, with the, with the help of uh, those in uh, those uh, groups, and we can provide them into one certain groups to them. Let's say uh, we want take we want to take those uh, first fifty machine to the uh, to the DevOps teams, and, we, and in that inventory file, we will assign those uh, those uh, those machine into uh, into some certain groups. Like uh, we want to take the fifty machine as a DevOps uh, developer teams, and the twenty five machine as a uh, as a tester a tester team. So in that, uh, we can uh, assign them into some certain groups. So what how this will help us basically? Uh, instead of uh, uh, installing all those uh, DevOps tools. Uh, to 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 be not get installed into the rest of these uh, groups like testers groups and uh, the DevOps uh, groups, and this should be uh, the, let's say we want to install some Java based uh, uh, packages and some some uh, Django based application. Uh, so these are the tools relevant to the developers. So why to install these tools to the rest of the uh, testers machine and to uh, and the DevOps machine as well. Mm -hmm. So for that case, we can group them into some certain uh, group name as well. Okay. So there is some naming convention as well. So that also we'll uh, try to learn into while we deploy or while we uh, write uh, those uh, info, uh, inventory files. So that in that you will uh, get to deep down into it as well. Yep, guys, are you there with me? Yes. So in this way, we usually uh, define uh, the groups in our uh, inventory file. So. For if we if we have defined those group name, so we just need to provide uh, instead of all, we just need to provide that uh, group name here. Let's say you want to deploy it into this uh, specific developer groups. So the the all the fifty machine will be considered as to this developer uh, groups. And let's say you want to uh, you, you don't have any groups and you have uh, you have some IPs attached to it. So you can directly communicate with the IP as well. So you can just uh, give the IP name here and by giving some uh, uh, 
a comma here so you can uh, as, uh, assign multiple ips here so you can go up to uh, any ips manually but this is not recommended you should uh, provide them into some certain groups and those groups will uh, reduce your uh, uh, certain lines of uh, 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 can say uh, program again this is not a program this is a configuration so yes guys yeah what is the difference with the, so the, we gave a name for the playbook but under a task there is another name yeah so the the first uh, name is for uh, uh, for that playbook so mm -hmm. there might be multiple playbooks to how you will uh, uh, identify the which playbooks we are trying to execute it so this is to just uh, just to give some uh, uh, unique name to it. unique name to it so okay. this is as per you accordingly you can give any name here so this is uh, defined by the uh, user itself. So let's say I want to give this is my first playbook in this instance. So I can give it uh, that name as well. So this is you can say in the form of a uh, quote you can say these are the uh, uh, user defined uh, uh, variables here. So the things which is uh, provided in the uh, the the uh, quote uh, uh, under this uh, uh, key we call it as name. So these are provided by the users. So under the task we have again provided the name. So this name is uh, is to define what uh, task we are going to perform so that we can understand that task. So uh, with the help of this name, we are trying to understand those uh, uh, those tasks here. Like uh, our task is to create a file into target machine. So target machine is also nothing but our remote machine itself. So don't get confused with the different, different terminologies. So we are talking about the uh, target machine, remote machine or uh, cloud machine. So these are nothing but your uh, but your remote machine itself. Do I see another hyphen uh, below task? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry to uh, thanks for reminding me. So basically, uh, this is a syntax. Uh, if you have uh, multiple tasks here, so this is only one task. So with this help of hyphen, you can assign. This is only one task assigned to this playbook. Let's say you might have multiple tasks. So uh, if you want to write some multiple tasks, you, you just need to start with hyphen again, and later on you just need to uh, provide the uh, commands and provide the name of that uh, the task. So thanks for reminding me. I just forgot that uh, that point. Sure, as well. I was just wondering. So we start yeah. the playbook with a hyphen, and before every command, you start again with a hyphen. Before every task, yeah. Before okay. performing a, every yeah. task, there is also one hyphen attached to it. So moving further, as I said, uh, the Ansible rules. So this is basically uh, the breakdown of your uh, playbooks. Like we have written some uh, some playbooks into one single uh, playbook file, and uh, sorry, YAML file, and uh, we want to break down that YAML file into some some uh, well specified uh, and uh, and well simpler uh, uh, structure way, so that uh, this can be uh, uh, this can be very well uh, understood here. So with the help of Ansible role, this does this will does the same thing which we have uh, done in this uh, playbook. So this is a small example we have taken here. So in, in the industry level, they they usually have some uh, some fifty to sixty uh, uh, different different tasks they usually perform here. So that you can understand their their complexity to uh, understand what uh, these playbooks have been doing here. So what all sort of things have been done? So this this makes them bit a bit much bit more uh, uh, complex to understand. So that's why they have uh, pulled out uh, uh, pulled out those uh, uh, different different uh, playbooks into different different files. Like uh, they will what they will does they will pull out this uh, task section and they will assign uh, they will pull out this uh, task section to some uh, individual file and they will uh, pull out some inventory from here. And they will attach to some different files. So this is how you can uh, they, they can understand that uh, they have stored this uh, host files into some different files. Uh, those are nothing but uh, those files are already uh, using the YAML files as well. But to uh, stop the complexity of understanding the uh, playbooks, so this can be reduced with the using this Ansible rules. So this does the same thing, but this uh, helps you to reduce the uh, uh, complexity of your uh, understanding the code or because understanding your configurations. So uh, uh, Ansible rules are independent of each other. Execution of one rule depend upon the others. So let's say 
uh, you have taken this uh, host files and uh, you have pulled out this host file from your playbooks and you have written uh, into some uh, some uh, uh, role based structure and you have written uh, tasks into some different uh, uh, to some different uh, yaml file of that uh, role structure so uh, there you can see they are dependent with each other like your host machine or you can say your host uh, information should always be attached by while you execute your playbook so in this way they are uh, uh, you can say they are independent with each other so that, that's why we, they are given with uh, they should be independent on each other so let me show you the uh, uh, structure of the uh, uh, ansible rules okay so there are uh, uh, two different uh, uh, playbooks here so one playbook is for uh, running the web server so this is we are taking as a first playbook so i'm taking i'm, I'm just uh, taking the same terminology a playbook here so because uh, to understand easily i'm just taking this uh, playbook again and again so this is my uh, second playbook yeah so under this uh, you can see there are some meta and there are some defaults and there are some uh, task uh, uh, directory here and or you can say task uh, files are there tasks in the form of these are nothing but they all are in the form of yaml file as well yaml file itself so every uh, every playbooks has some categorized way so instead of writing all those uh, uh, configuration into one single file they have introduced the ansible role structure so in that you just need to pull out all your uh, small small uh, uh, performing tasks like you want you have uh, defined some variables so you can uh, pull out those variable from that single file or you can see that single playbooks and you can uh, place it into uh, some directory of that uh, virus as well so i will show you in the in the coming session as well how we can uh, 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 convert our playbook or you can say a single uh, single playbooks to our uh, role structure uh, based playbook so this is a structure where we can understand like uh, like we want to just check the uh, task of our playbook so we will uh, instead of opening that full playbook we will go into this uh, task directory and we'll check for the what all sort of task it will going to perform we will uh, directly go into this directory as well so i'm hoping you might have understood uh, uh, this uh, this role structure so web server and app server are like sub directories under the main parent directory of the role yeah yeah so this is like a uh, web server is one of your uh, playbook and mm -hmm. uh, app server is also one of your playbook i've just given us a, a small name to it so that mm -hmm. we can understand that yeah so in that i have uh, i've just uh, tried to categorize them categorize those playbook into different different files so different different files in the form of uh, different different yaml files so like uh, for defining the task uh, we have uh, provided it to some some task uh, files so that uh, there might be some files which is need to be required to let's say we want to copy uh, some file from our master machine to our remote machine so that that information will be stored in this files so when you actually uh, do some uh, some playbooks writing here so th this is recommended to uh, to have some uh, role based structure so that you can easily understand the the flow of or you can say the the uh, execution of your playbooks like what all sort of things can be done with this, uh, this with this playbooks like instead of uh, reading all the playbooks i will go into the task and i will check what all sort of tasks will be getting performed after uh, after the execution of this playbook so similarly uh, if i want to share some files so i will uh, in, uh, not go into the whole single uh, playbooks i will go into this files and uh, i will uh, try to uh, check those uh, yaml file of this files so this is basically to convert your playbooks into your uh, role structure so this is nothing but to convert your uh, uh, your uh, single playbooks to some certain uh, structure or some beautified uh, role structure so that's what it said in the first point that uh, the breaking of the playbooks into multiple files that's what it means exactly so breaking a single playbooks into multiple files uh, in the form of uh, uh, tasks or in the form of variables handlers so this is the main things which uh, which it does so as i said uh, there are some ansible variables so the thing which you have already discussed in the in the previous session as well so variables are nothing but uh, let's say uh, 
we we've already came across with uh, different different variables like in in our playbooks there is also uh, a playbooks here we are using like uh, for for the name we are defining some variables like uh, uh, this is my first playbook and let's say we want to install some packages and in that uh, we, we need to provide some packages name so we will write to we need to write some 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 simple variables to it so those are nothing but the variables so this in this way these variables are used so mostly we have uh, tried to use it into our inventory files so inventory file uh, is a very uh, best example of uh, uh, understanding the ansible variables because uh, this inventory is nothing but uh, it is storing the information in the form of variables like uh, uh, the the uh, remote machines information of uh, ips and users and the password of that remote machines so these are th these are the things where we exactly define uh, uh, to some certain ansible variables so those are nothing but the uh, in the form of a key and the values pair so this is like a dictionary so you might have uh, understand understood with the uh, uh, concept of uh, data type in the python as well so there is uh, there are multiple compound data types like uh, list tuple dictionary so in in our yaml file so we usually uh, uh, play around with the list data type and the uh, uh, dictionary data types Yes, guys, uh, are you clear with it? Yeah. Okay. So moving further, uh, we'll check uh, how we define the variables. So here you can see, um, this is a similar example which you have uh, took with the, uh, uh, to deploy our first uh, playbooks. There you can see there are some hosts and we have defined some where's here. So this where is nothing but uh, instead of uh, calling multiple uh, multiple times or you can say uh, instead of calling those into uh, uh, some multiple time and uh, taking out some some more lines of code uh, we will try to define it into some certain variables here and we just need to uh, pull it down with with some certain syntax like we need to pull it down with some quote and the uh, uh, curly braces uh, twice curly braces opening and twice curly braces closing and in that we need to provide that to variable name so in this way, this uh, this uh, this has been called here. Hello. Oh, I think we lost him. Yeah. Uh, so where are you? Uh, like where are you staying right now, Smita? Um, I'm from Virginia. Oh, you're in Virginia, which place? Um, I stay close to Loudoun County Parkway, Ashburn. Oh, uh, okay. I was in Richmond and I just came to my friend's place here in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, same here. So are you working? Oh, uh, no, I'm a stay at home mom. Oh, I was okay. working. Um, I quit because I wasn't. Uh, I have, you know, I haven't been able to spend much time with my daughter now that oh, everything okay. has. Uh, she's in second grade now, mm -hmm. so everything, all the uh, lessons are gone online. So I just picked up a computer today from school. So I need to spend more time with her. Okay. Yeah. So you're just taking the training or related to this? Uh... Yeah, I just wanted to kind of make use of my time, you know, learn something. Okay. Um, I'm uh, basically from a very different background. Uh, I'm a biotechnologist. Um, okay. So I just wanted to venture out into other fields and get a flavor of what's happening elsewhere as well. So, okay, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think this batch, I think uh, uh, he's covered like a lot of topics before, right? Um, uh, for me, this is like uh, I've done Linux and then I did uh, Amazon and uh, uh, doing Docker with Bipin. And this is uh, the fourth one. Oh, okay. So how many days or weeks it's been? Uh, we've been doing it every day in the mornings. I mean, it's usually like around 11-ish. Uh, no, no, I mean the like, is it like uh, two weeks ahead or something? Um, I don't know exactly. Like, what do you mean? 
because uh, i'm just uh, like almost three topics has been covered right linux aws docker oh i think the, the, the different batches are starting depending on people's convenience and their uh, individual schedules so i'm not okay. sure that there is a set pace for every uh, you know the whole class as a group oh okay got people it. are starting at different times and all there are a lot of people you know from india from us um, uk Mm -hmm. so um yeah okay no i meant the, this batch like uh, how long it's been oh, since it started i started i think um yeah july okay okay got it so uh you know, there's python going on simultaneously but right now i don't have the time for doing two languages at the same time so i just picked up one Uh, you, two languages. You mean? Uh, As in, like, I I didn't have time to do Python in uh, you know earlier in the morning and then you know uh, attend Bipin session for Docker. So I couldn't do like two sessions in a day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I picked up just one. Okay. I'm high smith but I'm also from Virginia. I, I know Tolu, yeah, uh, Josh told me about it that you stay very close to me. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. I think uh, we should send him a Skype message and just check if he's going to continue yes but i don't think so i'm connected with him on skype oh, i'm just texting okay Yes, it's pretty late in India, so the network is pretty bad at this time. It's like off and on there be disturbances. He's not responding to the Skype message. Oh, he's back. Uh, hello. Hi, Bipin, you're back. Uh, hey. Uh, hey. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I face some network issue. I need to switch my network to the cellular network. So I'm uh, sorry for the inconvenience. No. Yeah. Can you see my screen right now? Yeah, we can see your screen, but uh, yeah, thank you. your voice is uh, breaking now and then. Okay. Okay. I guess I'll just switch to the uh, lower bandwidth network. So I guess this would be the same thing. Uh, is it is it clear now? Yeah, we can see your uh, PowerPoint slide. Okay. Oh, your voice, voice, your voice is, is good. Yeah, voice is good. Okay, great, great, great. Thanks, thanks for acknowledging. Yeah. Sure. So where were we basically? Uh, let Variables. You, know, uh, you were better, explaining uh, about the curly uh, brackets. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I I just wanted to know where exactly I lost the connection so that I uh, I can revert from that. So can you explain yeah. the tasks part? Why is there a debug there? Okay. Oh, okay. this is also one of the modules you can say. Okay. Ah, uh, the debug is nothing but to let's say you want to debug some some yeah. This is one of the uh, modules. So we gonna. Uh, uh, learn learn more about the. There are multiple. Uh, you can say there are uh, sixty seventy modules are available. So from that, this is also one of the modules of the Ansible. So we will get get into deep as well. So how uh, how we can use multiple modules here. So thereafter, I can see uh, you are uh, uh, trying to learn about the uh, variables. So the variables is nothing but. Uh, How we basically define the variables in the Ansible playbooks is uh, we usually define it at two uh, above your task, 
and instead of uh, defining it, uh, let's say you want to perform any multiple uh, uh, installation of your packages. So you, you, it is not recommended to uh, assign it into one single single uh, task, and you can't uh, go into assigning it to uh, uh, in individual tasks. What you will do is basically you will uh, try to automate this into some defining into some variables, and based on that variables, your task will be uh, get shorter and get, sh get get cut shorter into some uh, small some small uh, playbooks here. So in this way, you are trying to reduce your size of your playbooks. So this is well recommended to uh, follow some some variables here, so that uh, to to reduce your uh, uh, the the lines of your configuration of your YAML. So guess uh, are you clear? Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically uh, this follows some uh, key and value pair uh, syntax. So on the left side we call it as key and the the right side we call it as a value so this this keys you can define uh, by by the any any user defined keys you can provide here but the value should be the should be the appropriate because this is nothing but your uh, this will be your package name so that should be the universally defined uh, package name like for java you should be able to uh, know that which uh, relevant uh, packages is required for installing the java you can't uh, make any any user defined packages here so you should be aware of like the value should be uh, well appropriate to the uh, global understanding like uh, it should be uh, uh, the the unique one which is defined by the global like you for mean, installing like any kind of say, like for java you need jdk kit so i have to put the value as a jdk kit yeah in similar way yeah okay so let's similarly you want to install some some python based library so you, you should install some python uh, packages here so this is how it works and you can make some any any according to your understanding you can make any variable name uh, this is uh, defined by the user and you can uh, you just need to call that uh, that uh, defined keys uh, of that variable to your uh, execution under the task so uh, this is a structure you need to um, uh, start up with the code and you need to open uh, the double braces code and and you, you need to define the variables name and later on, uh, you need to end up, end up with some uh, uh, curly braces and the code. Why is the curly braces and the code? So this is a syntax to uh, define the variables in the playbooks. So in the in the coming session, we will gonna deploy these such uh, uh, playbooks while uh, uh, writing some some Ansible playbooks in it. So you should be aware of these uh, simple uh, uh, terminologies. So the tasks okay. are being deploying applications. Yeah. Deploying applications. Yeah, there can be any task like deploying any application, or there can be uh, copying any any kind of. Uh, the yeah. task is nothing. But your module part. So this is these modules are nothing but your execution of your task. So uh, we can use these module to perform our tasks. So there can be copy uh, tasks. So there can be some. Uh, uh, making some uh, inline changes in your files, or you want to make some, uh, or in case you want to create some user into your machine. So these are uh, like your small tasks. So uh, the task is nothing, but uh, you are using the module to perform your task. So this is the simple uh, idea about the task. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, a simple. Yeah. So this is uh, you can say uh, this is a final stage of. Uh, uh, pulling your playbook from uh, the Ansible Galaxy. So let me give you a brief idea about the Ansible Galaxy. So th th the thing which we have uh, done in the uh, Docker session as well, we usually try to pull up some uh, images from the uh, registries. So in similar way, Ansible Galaxy does the same thing. You don't need to write uh, the playbooks here. You can directly pull out uh, the playbook from the uh, 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 the uh, the repository, okay, say the community community build repositories, or can say we call it as community build playbooks. So there you don't need to uh, write the playbook; you just need to uh, write some sort of uh, uh, pulling command, which has already been written by some different different authors, and those authors playbooks you can easily uh, pull out from that, and you can fulfill all your uh, uh, requirement with those. So this is you can say you know, this is a very simple task. You can say uh, this is not uh, not a big task to uh, pull out this uh, Ansible Galaxy, but the actual uh, uh, you can say uh, buttermilk is uh, writing your own playbooks and 
as per your uh, uh, need you are writing your playbooks so in this way your uh, your full full on hands hands on dirty will be uh, getting into it so this is like your ready made uh, recipe has been uh, placed to you in front of you and you are just trying to eat it so this is that much simpler, easier here so this is also one of the ansible galaxy task here so let me show it into the browser where we can find this your voice is breaking can you see my screen of uh... okay okay uh, now is it clear yeah i mean yeah a few minutes it will be clear and again it starts breaking right yeah there's a disturbance okay one sec let me let me switch it to my network okay Uh, hello guys uh, am i clear now yes yes yeah okay okay great so uh, as i said uh, uh, this ansible galaxy is nothing but uh, there you can find uh, the author of uh, of the ansible there you can easily find those uh, those ready made uh, projects those have been uh, uh, stored into this community ansible community page so uh, let's get into it you can find uh, let's say you want to deploy any kind of uh, application so there is a, there is a already uh, uh, written some playbooks those or uh, those authors have already written some playbooks for that and uh, based on that you can easily uh, uh, run your uh, play uh, or you can say run your uh, uh, task to those remote machines so here you just need to define your host machines information so i guess uh, the network is a bit slow here so no worries uh, you can find it here i will share you the link of those okay guys are there with me yeah yeah okay so uh, this is you can say this is a community forum you where uh, authors usually uh, 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 write some sort of uh, playbooks as per the user requirement or you can say those are uh, ready made playbooks written by the authors and those are published to this uh, community page that we call it as ansible galaxy so can you explain the last point there's, there's the last point so, there under the last... galaxy can you please explain that yeah ansible galaxy is a website where user can uh, share their rules and the other users can install and manage those rules basically uh, uh, there basically uh, uh, as I, and as i'm talking about the playbooks so they have uh, uh, written in the form of role structure so the thing to perform this structure so in this way uh, in similar way this galaxy also stores the the the, the playbooks in the form of uh, roles based structure where uh, users can easily uh, share their roles so share their roles is nothing but sharing their playbooks and 
they can uh, make some modification into those roles as well and as per their need they can easily mod uh, modif uh, modify it uh, their, their playbooks as well okay so ansible galaxy is, the, is a website where user can share their roles in in the form of we call it as uh, authors so mm -hmm. authors usually write their uh, their playbooks in the form of a role based structure and the other users who need uh, to install this uh, this specific uh, uh, specific roles to to remote machine the other users will try to uh, uh, pull those uh, pull those uh, role based uh, playbooks and it will try to install it into the rest of the remote machines so in this way they uh, this this uh, ansible galaxy community page works so when i pull something from galaxy i can um, modify it to suit my requirement exactly you can make any kind of uh, changes to it as per your uh, actual requirement so there might be some some uh, some requirements you want to add on to the existing uh, author playbook and you you need Okay, is there is there any more queries, Yashasvi? Uh, Your voice is breaking a lot. Uh, Smita, tell me. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my router is not working right now. So. Okay. In between this router, got uh, got some, some issue with the network. Uh, as we have. Uh, Almost complete with the today's session. So let me let me take up uh, one more slide. Sure. Ansible Vault. So Ansible Vault is uh, one of the feature in the Ansible as well. So to make uh, to make some confidential data to to some encrypted values like uh, like uh, for storing the uh, remote machine uh, information. So instead of uh, uh, storing the password of those uh, those machine of those remote machine, you can store it. Uh, those uh, you can say uh, in similar term, you can say uh, you are just disclosing the password of those uh, those remote machine. So this is very much confidential uh, data of uh, of those remote machines. So you should be aware of uh, storing them into some encrypted way. So there is a feature of Ansible Vault. We call it as uh, Ansible Vault. So in that uh, you can. Uh, store your confidential data in a very well suited encryption uh, techniques like uh, there are multiple uh, techniques for uh, uh, storing your uh, uh, confidential data in the form of uh, uh, sha uh, 256 or sha 512 so these are some uh, encryption techniques so this helps you to uh, make some uh, some changes and your uh, actual uh, things will be hidden inside your uh, encrypted value so this is a you can say the very important feature of uh, one of the feature for uh, you can say uh, to uh, uh, encrypt your uh, uh, your uh, your variables like uh, your, like your passwords here so instead of uh, disclosing your password you can uh, manage to uh, set up the vault to that password and you just don't need to make uh, visibility of your password to any other. So the YAML file itself is password protected so that nobody can access it. No, 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 no. That is not the thing. Let's you will be doing uh, no. giving the password, securing it by password. Uh, no, no. Let's say, let's say, let's say you have. Using. Uh, I'm taking an example of uh, this uh, structure here. So in the inventory file, as I said, uh, 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 remote machines inform like uh, like this file is uh, uh, disclosed to any uh, uh, anonymous user, and that that user can do anything with that uh, with these remote machines. So we will just try to make sure that we will try to make some uh, Ansible vault feature inside this inventory file because we are giving this uh, in this file we are giving our IPs we are giving our host machine or you can say our uh, user uh, username of that machine and we are giving the password of that machine. So in all the way uh, you can see we are uh, giving the full access of this uh, of that 
machine or you can say that that remote machine to any any person here so for that uh, there is a very uh, much uh, this inventory file in such a way that uh, that your password should be encrypted and the rest of the things can be visible there is no problem but your password should be provided uh, outside to this uh, inventory file so there is one feature of uh, uh, providing it to your password to some uh, ansible vault so that also uh, password of for remote machine so this is not like protecting your uh, your full yaml file this will only protect uh, the thing which are already inside your yaml file in the form of like your password so mm -hmm. instead of sharing your whole password you just need to uh, uh, Encrypt your uh, inside the uh, content of that uh, YAML file. Okay. I'm hoping you you you, you might have getting this concept. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, I would say uh, we are done. So from the next time, we'll uh, uh, get more handier with it. So next time, we'll uh, try to play around with uh, the Ansible creation. And I will try, we'll try to start with the Ansible app setup. And uh, we'll start with the deployments, uh, small, small playbooks for uh, executing the, uh, the copy. Or we'll try to use multiple modules of those uh, uh, Ansible playbooks. So rest, I would say, uh, uh, I would stop my words here. And uh, any more queries, you can. Uh, Ask me here. Yes, uh, is Smita. Um, so, um, how do I uh, go about installing it? Okay. So, I will share you some uh, some installation uh, documentation uh, with this uh, uh, email after the sure. transcription. Okay. I will attach some installation command. You should uh, make sure to uh, uh, install it into each machine. Yeah. So, any more queries, uh, Yashishri and Tolu? Uh, no, I think as of now. OK, great. And uh, uh, then thank you guys for joining. And enjoy learning. Great day ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye, yeah. everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. Yes, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.